first performance um, was part of a show called The Rap Party, um, which was put on by poet in your Ellums. And um, the concept behind it is that there's 10, there's 10 artists, and each of the artists have to choose a track, um, two tracks in fact. So each artist chooses two tracks and then writes a poem about hip hop. So it was really interesting just doing that and the take that people took in terms of um, writing about hip hop and the different ideas and the different relationships which people came, um, came up with. So it was, it was really positive. Between Cockney and Ebonics, over boombox, beatbox and beats electronic, lovable rogue, modern day sage, only with a swagger not just safe for the stage. He reps everybody, from the cradle to the grave. He's the truth, they say, living proof, they say. Uncouth in the booth, Malcolm would be proud, they say. Say. Marcus would be proud, they say. Gandhi would be proud, they say. Even Millicent Fawcett would be proud, they say. Yet nay say you say. And these days man's got to get paid and he's changed and his mixtapes just don't sound the same. Man sold himself and has become a slave to the psychology of C-R-E-A-M. I think it was coming to London and being exposed first of all to the kind of poetry scene that was going on here at the time, which is a very conscious movement that kind of a lot of the poets that were from like South London, you had like like Short Man, Floetic Lara, Amanua, One Ness, Tugstar, there's like a big scene that was taking place and so we were part of that scene. When I came of age, I learned that Shepherd's Bush Empire and Jazz Cafe could be transformed into a sacred space at night. People would all stand in line, pay their tithes, take to the floor and wait in awe for their high priest MC to deliver his prophecies over beats. The stage becomes an altar. The stage becomes an altar and we all want to be saved. We take people on a journey through words, through artistic expression. We are Muslim, Muslim women and we're obvious Muslim women. So people do have connotations when they think about us. But I mean, for the most part, it informs our music quite a lot, you know. And that's not to say we rap about, you must read the Quran, this is good for you, you know. But it makes us aware, because if people are going to be like, these Muslim women, why are they wearing this cloth? We want to know a bit more about why they're, why they're interested in that, why, why is it such a big thing. So in terms of a lot of political things which is happening, that influences us. And obviously we are Muslims and we didn't convert to Islam for anything political. It was for spiritual reasons. So our spirituality comes out through our music as well. But like with most people, you know, wherever they are, wherever they come from, we're Jamaican as well, you know, our reggae comes out in our music, you know. Most people, they are shaped by their experiences and by what they see. So we have... Uh, I guess a Muslim woman's gaze, you know, mm. but our music isn't necessarily Islam mm. But again, we gained Islam when we moved to London. Mm. So it is all part of the shaping of yeah. us really